In this video, we're going to practice plotting in MATLAB. Before we start, be sure to download the 2 underscore car underscore data dot mat file linked in the video description. Make sure to put it in your working directory, aka the same folder as where you put the script file. A dot mat or mat file contains MATLAB data such as vectors or matrices. You can import a mat file and it'll load some data into your workspace. It's useful for cases like this where I want to give you a decently large data set but you don't need to worry about how it was obtained. The first thing we need to do is load the mat file. This can be accomplished by the load function. It's pretty self-explanatory. All we need to do is provide the full file name including the .mat file extension as a character vector. I'll leave a link to the load documentation in the video description. The 2 car data .mat file contains five vectors, the position of each car, the velocity of each car, and one time vector. All five vectors have been loaded into the workspace and we can manipulate them as we please. We won't actually be changing any of the values though, we'll just be plotting them. Let's plot the position of the first car. We can use the figure command to open up a new figure window. Then we use the plot command to plot the position of car 1 over time within the figure window. Note the syntax is t and then x1, not the other way around. This is somewhat backwards from the English language. When we say plot the position over time, that means we plot the position on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. You might be tempted to then say plot x1 comma t, but MATLAB requires us to give what will be plotted on the x-axis first, then the item to be plotted on the y-axis second. Keep this in mind going forward. The plot looks kind of plain, so let's spruce it up by changing the color and marker styles. MATLAB provides plenty of color and marker customization options. To change the color, we can use any of the short keywords here, or we can enter an RGB triplet to form a color that's not included in this table. We can also choose a line style, which changes how the lines are connected. Finally, we can use a marker to make the individual data points a specific shape. We can string together any combination of color, marker style, etc. to make informative and aesthetically pleasing plots. These links are in the video description. I highly recommend bookmarking them. I refer to these pages nearly every week because I have to plot a lot of stuff and I definitely don't remember all the customization options. Let's make a slight modification to our existing plot. We added an additional input to the plot function as a character vector. The bx colon specifies how we want the data to appear. The b tells MATLAB to plot the data in blue. The x changes the marker shape. It makes each data point appear as a cross. Finally, the colon changes the line style from the default solid line to a dotted line. Within the plot window, we can move the graph and zoom in or out. If you hover over the top right hand corner, you'll encounter some buttons. The hand button allows us to pan left, right, up and down as you wish. The magnifying glasses allows you to zoom in or out of a selected region. Zooming in allows us to really see the X's and the dotted lines connecting each X. If you unselect the magnifying glass, you can hover over a data point and see its specific coordinates. Finally, the Home button restores the plot window to its default configuration. You can use these buttons to quickly inspect your plot. Our dataset contains the position and velocity of two cars, so let's add the position of the second car to this plot. We plotted the position of car 2 in red using diamonds connected by a dashed line. The issue is that the first car's position data is now gone. Whenever you have consecutive plot statements, MATLAB overwrites whatever data was previously plotted by default. 
We can rectify this by issuing the hold on command after the first plot command. The hold on command retains currently existing plots whenever you add new plots to the same figure. It's now incredibly easy to visually compare the positions of both cars over time. We can see that each car starts at the origin. Car 2, which is the red line, is in front of car 1 up until about 6.5 seconds, then car 1, which is the blue line, overtakes car 2 near the very end of the dataset. Reading the plot can be hard without a grid. We can add a grid in a similar way as a hold on command. By default, MATLAB disables the grid. Using grid on turns on the grid lines. It doesn't really matter where you put the grid on statement. We can move it pretty much anywhere after the first plot command here in line 13. However, it does matter where you put the hold on command. I like to bundle the hold on and grid on commands in one line for concision. Whenever you have multiple lines in a single plot, you need to add a legend. The legend command accepts the label of each dataset as separate character vectors. The order matters. Each label is applied to the line in the order in which they're plotted, so make sure that you don't accidentally flip car 1 and car 2. The legend is placed in the upper right corner by default. Think of the cardinal directions. Its current location corresponds to northeast. If we want to move the legend, we can issue a pair of additional inputs to the legend command to place it in another cardinal direction. Let's move it to the upper left corner of the plot, or the northwest direction. These two arguments are known as a name value pair. The name specifies what we want to change. In this case, we want to change the legend's location. The value can either be a character vector or a number, depending on what property you're changing. Altogether, this name value pair tells MATLAB to change the legend's location from the default northeast position to the northwest position. Note that MATLAB is smart enough to recognize that the name value pair is a control command, not a label for the data in our plot. Every graph also needs a descriptive title and axis labels. We can add a title via the title command and axis labels via the X label and the Y label commands. These are pretty simple. You just feed it an appropriate name as a character vector. When you label the X and Y axes, don't forget the units, such as measuring the time in seconds and the position in meters. Try to be as descriptive as possible with your title, not just something like position over time. Now let's plot the velocities. I'll comment out this initial set of plot statements we made so they don't pop up whenever we run the code anymore. Let's plot the velocity of each car on a separate figure. We opened two separate figure windows with the two figure statements. The first figure plots car 1's velocity in black using O's. The second figure plots car 2's velocity using pentagrams with a dot dashed line in the default plot color. It would be nice if we could generate one figure with multiple plot windows stacked vertically or horizontally. 
we can use the subplot command to make a single figure window containing multiple plots. The subplot command makes a matrix of plots. There are three inputs. The first two specify the number of rows and number of columns in our plot matrix. Here, the first two commands to each subplot call are 2 and 1, so MATLAB will generate a 2 by 1 matrix of plots within the figure window. The third argument specifies which plot will be used for the plotting. In the first subplot command, the last argument is a 1, so this plot statement will appear on the first subplot. Then we have a 2 here, so this plot statement, which is car 2's velocity, will appear on the second subplot, or the lower subplot. I intentionally omitted the grid from the lower subplot for fun, but I recommend adding it to improve clarity. As always, we need axis labels and a title. The X and Y labels should be familiar. What's new is the SG title command instead of just the title command. SG title is like the regular title command, but it creates an overall title for the entire window. That way, we don't necessarily have to add a title to each individual plot. We can also change the thickness of a line by supplying a name value pair to a plot statement. This represents a name value pair. The name of the property is the line width, and the value of the line width is being set to 8 times the default line thickness. In this case, the value is a multiplier, so it can be any number, including decimals, greater than 0. Values less than 1 make the line thinner than the default line thickness. It's obvious from looking at the plot that 8 is pretty overkill, so play around with this number and try to find a value which to you looks pretty aesthetically pleasing. As mentioned earlier, we can change the color using a name value pair as well. Now we're telling MATLAB to plot the data in whatever color this RGB triplet forms. Each of these three numbers can range from 0 to 1 inclusive. They represent the relative amounts of red, green, and blue. In this case, we're using 0.5 parts of red, no parts of green, and 0.8 parts of blue, which together make some shade of purple. This is especially useful if you want to plot in a color that's not explicitly specified in the short name list in the MATLAB documentation. The last thing we'll do is set the figure's position. If you have a large plot or multiple plots, it can be annoying to manually resize or move the figure every time you run the code. We can set the default position of a figure by issuing the set command. The first change we made was assigning the figure statement to a variable called my underscore fig. That way, the set command knows which figure to change. The set command uses a name value pair as well. In this case, the name of the property we're changing is the position. The value is this for entry vector. This vector specifies the position and size of the figure. The first two entries represent the x and y coordinates of the figure's bottom left corner on your screen. The last two entries specify the length and height of the figure. All four of these are measured in pixels. You and I probably have different size monitors, so the figure may materialize at a different location depending on your screen. You can play around with each of these four numbers until you find a suitable spot for your figure. And that's all for this video. We learned how to load a mat file, plot data, experiment with the color, marker, and line styles, 
create subplots, and change the default position of a figure. Plotting is an essential skill and we'll be plotting extensively in this course, so please practice as much as you can. See you next time.